Hello guys, in this video we'll be taking a look at the autosomal DNA results of two Chimerians from Moldova. Let's begin with the first individual who is a man with Y DNA Q1. Based on his raw DNA data, this is what he is predicted to look like. With my Nashakot, he is predicted to have hazel color eyes um, and blonde hair. For eye shape, he's predicted to have uh, it seems he's predicted to have Oceanian or East Asian eye shape. This is why I depicted him with sort of slanted eyes here. And with Snipper Freak, he's predicted to have blue eyes uh, and intermediate color skin. Very interesting stuff. He has blue haplotype 1, NBH2, NBH3, but he has a very exotic genotype in SLC24A5 and SLC45A2. And because of that, he's actually getting predicted to have hazel eyes instead of blue with Mina Shakot tool. For DRD2's provenance in pro variation, he actually does not have any European no-go learner variants, which means higher risk of schizophrenia, more dopamine D2 receptors, uh, less likely to be a European, less European genotype, uh, does not have the mutation for uh, protection for cannabis-associated psychosis, so when he smoked cannabis, uh, he is more likely to have uh, psychotic symptoms, and he's got this genotype, which increases the risk of obesity, and type 2 diabetes. He does not have the mutation that protects myopia, that's pretty typical for Europeans, uh, so we, we can conclude here that he might have had myopia or nearsightedness. Uh, he's got this genotype which increases the risk of autism, but this is a pretty typical genotype to have. As you can see, 61% of people on code gen have this genotype here, uh, so it increases the risk of autism, but it's pretty typical. Most people have this genotype. and. Um, it has got this genotype for thyroid cancer, and finally, does not have uh, East Asian flush. Now, East I say it's East Asian because uh, it's actually a condition that mostly affects East Asians, and he does not have it, and it, basically what it is is worse hangovers and more likely to become alcoholic, more alcohol dependence, and also East Asians tend to flush up, like they get little red patches on their cheeks when they uh, drink alcohol. When it comes to his polygenic traits, he's got a low risk score for coronary heart disease. Uh, he's got a low risk score for type 2 diabetes. He's got a pretty average risk score for Alzheimer's. Uh, he's got a low risk score for Parkinson's disease. Uh, he's got an average risk score for body mass index. Now, moving on to GD match results, this is what he scores with Eurogenes K13. Uh, you can see he's scoring actually a lot of West Asian. 25% West Asian and 6% South Asian. Um, because of this, because of this West Asian and South Asian, and actually East Mediterranean as well, he is pretty similar to various uh, West Asian groups such as Tatars, Nagais, Tajiks. Now, Tatars are in Eastern Europe, but they actually have quite a lot of uh, West Asian admixture. And he's actually getting more of a mixture of Tatar plus Tajik or Tatar plus Tabasaran. So he's pretty southern in terms of ancestry and the fact that he's getting Tatar. Uh, it's also a signature. It, it also means that he's got some uh, East Asian or Siberian admixture. And we see that with G25. We see that he's got 25% Shore Mountain or 24% Shore Mountain for both of the models. So he's got a little bit of Siberian admixture as well. This is what he scores with MDLP K16 Modern. He's actually scoring quite a lot of Siberian and Southeast Asian. You can see on the bottom here, 8% uh, Siberian plus 5% Southeast Asian. So that's 13% in total. And uh, actually closest to Tajiks, followed by Turkmen, but very high distance here because there isn't a ethnicity today that resembles this kind of admixture. He's getting modeled as a mixture of Tajiks plus various uh, Northern Europeans or uh, Siberians and with Harappa World we see we see more of the same. He's scoring actually, uh, let's see, he's scoring 6.5% um, Northeast Asian and 7.5% Siberian and he's actually also scoring some Beringian and American. You have to account for this admixture as well. And uh, he's actually getting one of those mixture of Turkmen plus Mardvin or Turkmen plus Russian. So this looks like a very Turkish or a Turk, I, should, I should say Turkic result, right? Uh, this looks like something you would expect a Turkic individual's DNA to look like. Uh, and this is very interesting because Chimerians were a very early Iron Age population. They even preceded Scythians, right? So how did this kind of East Asian Siberian admixture find its way into uh, the steppe, into the Western steppe at this time period? Very interesting stuff. He's closest to Uzbeks here with PanDNA LK12, uh, actually getting modeled as a mixture of Uzbek plus uh, various Northern Europeans. And uh, this is where the Turkic 
uh, angle comes in you see he's scoring 26 percent east asian here with ancient eurasia k6 this is not from this is not admixture from ancestral north eurasians this is literal uh, modern east asian admixture that he's that he's got and um, he's actually getting modeled as a mixture of step iron age plus Uyghurs or Steppe Iron Age plus Eskimos, but he is an Iron Age Steppe individual, so that's kind of interesting. I think the reference for Steppe Iron Age uh, is more like Sarmatians here. And with Gedrosia K3, he's actually scoring 28% East Eurasian once again. Uh, a lot of a lot of East Eurasian admixture. Very, this would be a very typical result for a Turkic individual from the Steppe. Let's move on to the second individual, uh, also a Kimerian, also from Moldova, from pretty much the same location, but this one is a female. Her raw data file is much higher quality, so there's a higher quality phenotype prediction and traits. And um, she's actually predicted to have brown eyes, uh, snub shaped nose, actually Native American nose type, and black hair with my Anosha uh, With my tools for eye shape prediction, she's predicted to have uh, Oceanian or East Asian eye shape, which is why I depicted her looking pretty East Asian. Uh, in the image and she does not have blue eye haplotype 1 or any of the other blue eye haplotypes that follow uh, however she does have some light variants in SLC 24A5, SLC 45A2 so she's kind of like the opposite of the previous guy who's got uh, light light variants in OCA2 but he's got dark variants in SLC 24A5 and SLC 45A2 and she's like the opposite of him and she actually also does have uh, East Asian EDAR she's got uh, East Asian uh, well what is it it's it's uh, Shovel-shaped incisors, epicanthic folds, straight hair. That's what it. That's what it's all about. And um, with uh, white sex, she's predicted to have actually dark skin and uh, very dark coloring. She's got two derived variants in EDAR, which means uh, very East Asian phenotype. And uh, when it comes to alcohol, she's got some genotypes which increase risk of alcohol dependence and also agreeableness. Somehow, she does not have the East Asian alcohol flush. Um, so not e no uh, flushing up when when drinking alcohol. She's got this genotype in Act One, which leads to lower odds of cannabis-induced psychosis. Very interesting stuff. If she smoked weed, she would not get psychotic symptoms. And for Comtsvalmet variation, she seems to be a warrior, which is a typical genotype for non-Europeans. Uh, higher Compt enzyme activity, uh, quicker do dopamine reuptake, and less dopamine in the system. And for OXTR, she does not have uh, the sociopath gene in OXTR. Uh, when it comes to lactose persistence, she does not have European lactose persistence mutations. Uh, she probably, probably has some other lactose persistence mutations that aren't European, and she does have this genotype which increases her risk of uh, myopia or nearsightedness. When it comes to polygenic traits, she's got a high risk score for Crohn's disease, she's got a high risk score for Parkinson's disease, uh, she's got a average risk score for type 2 diabetes, uh, she's got an average risk score for bipolar disorder. Uh, she's got a low risk score for schizophrenia. Um, she's got a pretty high risk score for stroke. Uh, she's got a pretty average risk score for brain aneurysm. She's got a low risk score for coronary heart disease. Uh, and she's got a pretty low risk score for asthma. Moving on to G25 and GZ match, she is actually very East Asian in terms of ancestry. She's got a lot of Siberian admixture. In fact, she's more Siberian than she is like Tajik and Northern European. So she's more Siberian than she is uh, even European in terms of ancestry. And with uh, Eurogenes K13, she's scoring 25.5% Siberian plus Amerindian plus some East Asian as well. Together, that's like 40% if you add them all up. Uh, closest to Afghan Turkmen, but the oracle is bad. The oracle doesn't have references for various, uh, for example, Bashkirs or Siberian Tatars. And she's actually getting modeled as a mixture of Shores, which is a Siberian group that has some Indo-European admixture. I think Shores have like 15% Indo-European admixture, but she's getting modeled as a mixture of Shores plus various uh, actual Europeans from Northern Europe. This is what she scores with MTL PK16 Modern. I, I love this calculator because it's like, it's so cool. It's got so many references, especially in the Oracle for various uh, Russian, Turkic, and like finno ugric groups. For example, it's got th this many Bashkir references. Ufa, Kildi Gulova, Bashkartostan, Muradimova. Uh, it's got Udmurts and Maris, very interesting stuff. And lo look at how close she is to Udmurts and Maris. That's pretty cool. Uh, 
and she's somehow closer to Forest Yuka Gears than she is to Chuvash, which is interesting. With the Oracle, she's getting more or less a mixture of Shore plus various Northern Europeans, pretty much what you've seen with G25 and Eurogenes K13, but there is a twist here, there's also Shore plus Mishar Tatar. You, you can see in line number 5, half Shore, half Mishar Tatar seems to resemble her uh, in terms of admixture. She's scoring around 40% East Asian components on Pandian LK12, like if you add up the Amerindian plus Siberian plus East Asian plus uh, Beringian, you're gonna get around 40% East Asian admixture, and she's closest to Turkmen here, uh, actually getting more of a mixture of Chuvash plus Hazara or Turkmen plus Chuvash, so it seems to be a mixture of Turkic plus, plus Turkic basically. And what's interesting is that, once again, I'm gonna remind you, it's an Iron Age in individual from Western Steppe, so uh, how the Turkic admixture is getting into Iron Age Western Steppe, it's kind of crazy how uh, these individuals have this East Asian admixture. This is what she scores with Gedrosia K3, and what's interesting about the sample is that despite her very East Asian phenotype, as we've determined previously, uh, she is still more West Eurasian than she, than she is East Eurasian. She's still more European-like in terms of ancestry than she is like Japanese or Korean, right? Um, now, that's very interesting. Thanks for watching my video until the end. You can download both of these files in 23andMe format from link which is in the description. And uh, thanks for watching. Goodbye.